Dear viewers, good afternoon and welcome to the show. It's the Business X-Ray Show today. And um, we are here, as usual, to share with you very important tips and experiences uh, in the world of business. Because we know, yes, some have joined or taken the route of sport. Others are into the route of politics and all the others. But once everything settles, then business takes the day because someone has to eat. Someone has to make that money to sustain themselves and their families and to meet a number of aspirations that we normally, you know, the resolution we give ourselves at the beginning of the year about the boxes we want to tick, to tick in the course of the year. So with me in the studio, um, I have our resident coach, uh, Charles. You're most welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to be here. Very good. And uh, with Charles, we have, uh, again, uh, another special guest, uh, Noah Womgisha. Uh, Noah, you're most welcome to the show. <coughs> thank you, Charles. Very good. Good afternoon, viewers. Yeah. And thank you. Uh, that's Noah. He's a business development expert from ABI. And uh, Charles Ochichi, the executive director, Enterprise Uganda. Now, um, the topic we're discussing today is on corporate governance. We're looking at business sustainability through corporate governance and succession planning. Now, if you look closely, uh, one actually fits into the other, mm. and uh, but corporate governance is a real thing because it's a much, much, much bigger mm. element and a very critical ingredient in the success of a business. But not just success of a business in the short term, yeah. but sustainability going forward. Mm. Of course, we have the experts in the house. Uh, I don't want to preempt the discussion for the day. Uh, mm. But before we go into today's discussion, um, as usual, uh, Charles, mm. uh, it's been quite an interesting week. It is. Uh, I don't know uh, what tickled your mind uh, mm -hmm. this week, mm -hmm. but at least it is ending on a very, on, on, on a pitch. It's a very high note. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. the new president of Tanzania mm -hmm. in Uganda. That's correct. At a time when, uh, <coughs> of course, we've had a couple of issues with Kenya over some of our commodities and the mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. what you read from, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. I think for me, for the week, uh, real what has been very interesting and a lot of print and uh, coverage has been done on that subject mm -hmm. the departure of the archbishop yeah. the late uh dr cyprian luanga mm. so many good things have been said about him so many things have been stated about his legacy mm. but among the many that i picked up that i thought this country needed to have picked a leap from was not him the late put everything towards creating sustainable economic interventions. Okay. And in doing so, he made sure corporate governance, management, leadership systems were at the center of it. Mm. I participated in many board training sessions of Centenary Bank, right from the time when it was still at Entebbe Road, be well before even they broke the grounds to, to do the Mapera House. Mm. And his commitment was total. He creates a successful story of a supervised bank in the top five in the country. Mm. Then he discovers that this supervised bank has got a market niche and it ought to serve that market niche. Mm. Now he again sees that um, that market niche leaves out another category of individuals mm. that need to be brought to the centenary bank bracket. He goes ahead and begins to start Twekembe, mm -hmm. a circle, mm -hmm. using less than, a, ten, less than 5 million shillings. By the time he was leaving, Twekembe was in billions of shillings, serving so much of a very rural community and transforming their lives. Yeah. And making that one the stepping step to go to the formal centenary bank. Mm -hmm. And to me, even just that bit alone, to just say, what do we learn from this? Whatever you do, one, look at its continuity. Mm -hmm. Two, make sure that you have clarity of the customer. Mm -hmm. Three, do not bring too many emotions to try and say now, Sentinel Bank, why have you not served this villager who is having two chicken, who is having half a garden? There is a separate solution for that. Mm -hmm. And that solution does not necessarily mean that that villager is genetically meant to remain there. Mm -hmm. So to me, it brings out a lot of things that we needed to have captured. Yeah. And some of this should have been captured way before we said bye to him. Mm. 
And that's why I love these Sunday sessions here. When we bring individuals here, Ugandans should know that we are bringing these individuals to share their stories because these stories define ordinary individuals making extraordinary footprints in our country. Mm. And we've mm. had quite a number of powerful stories on this show. Uh, and of course, if you look at, uh, you know, the common denominator here, yeah, uh, you see that a lot of them actually have a thing or two with one structuring yes. their operations. Yeah. But then also it points to the direction of corporate governance. Corporate governance, clarity of the vision mm -hmm. and being not too emotionally disrupted. Mm -hmm. When the governance requires that now remove so and so mm -hmm. or the governance requires that can you please bring an internal auditor or bring an external auditor. Don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. Get used to that and all the time make sure that ultimately the service you give to the consumer of your services should define the kind of a journey you are going to walk. Thank you, Charles. Mm -hmm. Now, before I bring in um, uh, Noah here, of course I know, if you notice, right, um, our viewers, right from uh, the beginning of, uh, I think, December, we've been trying to look specifically at uh, how you can run and structure your business for sustainability. Of course, we tackled areas like business planning and the rest. And today, we are looking at the issue of uh, succession planning, corporate governance sitting into that space. Mm. And uh, within that, of course, you want to unpack this concept or this animal called corporate governance. Because sometimes, mm. I mean, it's, it sounds up there. Mm. You know, mm. in a sentence, when you throw in the word corporate, <laughs> and at the same time, you also throw in governance. Governance. Um, a micro <laughs> operator or a small business operator might yeah. switch off and say yeah. that is for yeah. other people. Yeah. Correct. Um, and this is the point where I bring you in, Noah. Um, just going to the basics. What are we talking about when we, talk, when we say corporate governance? Uh, corporate governance in simple terms, refers to those uh, practices you know, and principles that you put in place at your area where you have interests. It mm. could be in a business, whether it is for profit or it could be a non-government organization. It can even be your household mm. with one aim, which is to do what you're doing perfectly in an imperfect and an uncertain environment. Mm. So anything... The, those small things you do to make sure whatever you're doing, you do it perfectly in an environment which is not perfect. Mm. Then what you're doing at that point is corporate governance. Mm -hmm. Corporate means uh, uh, an organized, registered entity licensed to operate uh, in, in, in the country, in Uganda, mm -hmm. in our laws. Mm -hmm. Governance means uh, 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 taking charge. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So, so uh, anything you do, as long as you're trying to perfect what you're doing, irrespective of the challenges you're encountering, mm. then you're doing corporate governance. I can give a quick example. Uh, for example, all the staff we hire in organizations are not, uh, uh, in fact, none is an angel. So mm. uh, they are liable to mistakes. Mm. Some mistakes may be deliberate, others may be unintentional. Mm. So, from the corporate governance perspective, you come in and say, okay, what safeguards do I put to ensure that if I'm leaving them in charge of money, that money doesn't disappear? Either they don't steal it or it is not stolen from them. Mm. Uh, if it is a vehicle, what systems do I put in place? Because uh, as, as an MD or as an EDO, as a CEO, I'm not going to be going to every petrol station where they fuel from to ensure that they put in the right fuel. Mm. So that system I'll put in the vehicles to track where vehicles are mm. the, 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 so that you know, whoever is taking the vehicle ensures that for them to keep their job, they have to do the right thing. A collection of all those practices mm. Mm. is equal to corporate governance. Yes. So uh, if you go a bit uh, slightly technical, you now start talk of things like mm. manuals, mm. policies, mm. Uh, plans, whether they are business plans or strategic plans, everything that mm. you're doing mm. to ensure that you know you, you you do business perfectly, have people in the right places, uh, have business activities going on in the right places, irrespective of how imperfect 
the business environment where you operate is, is what can be collectively called corporate governance. Corporate governance. Yeah. Mm. All right, thank you, Noah. Um, I'm sorry, viewer, our viewers, I'll have to interrupt you um, a bit. Uh, okay, we're getting a bit of uh, a little interruption because of, uh, as you know, uh, Uganda is signing a crude oil agreement with uh, Tanzania, and here we're talking about business. Of course, it's yeah. going to come with a lot of opportunities, mm -hmm. and I know that particular element um, is, of course, live. It's a moment we don't want to lose here, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we are getting there just to pick that element and then come back. Tania Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, to attend and witness the signing ceremony of the host government agreement between the governments of Uganda uh, and. Uh, All right, um, they're going to do the recording and then. is adoption of this culture. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, Noah has uh, ably, you really, really helped us to break down mm -hmm. uh, what corporate governance is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, by all standards, <coughs> yeah. it will be a good attribute or a good value mm -hmm. for any business to adopt. Yes. How would you rate the mm -hmm. adoption mm -hmm. uh, of, of, mm -hmm. of corporate governance? And here I'm not only talking about the mm -hmm. macro operators, I'm talking mm -hmm. about even the medium to large. Mm. How are we mm. adopting mm. this principle in this country? First of all, the background that Noah has given, if you do corporate governance well, mm. it separates individuals from the enterprise. Mm. Or it, it separates the owners from the entity. Mm. The entity we are talking about now is your business that is delivering certain solutions. Okay. Now, that entity, because of corporate governance principles, will now be saying, I need this kind of a person for customer care. I need this kind of a person for uh, production. Mm -hmm. I need so and so to do the accounting and financial records aspects of the business. That is what corporate governance is now dictating. Mm -hmm. Now, enforcing those things come with a bit of pain. Mm -hmm. You wanted a certain relative to become the accountant. Mm. Corporate governance says, no, for that position, these are the issues, these are the kind of types of reference yes. and the uh, specifics for the person yeah. to come to that position. Mm. Now, that denies you that opportunity to say, you know what, mm. I needed so and so to have come here. And the mm. person I'm talking about is the person who took me to school. Mm. Live that relationship separately from this entity. This entity says, if I'm going to have my financials right, this is a, these are the person specifications. Mm. If I'm going to do my operations and production right, mm. this is the technology, this is the opera operating process. So corporate governance has got that element of separating owners, individuals from the entity, mm. but ensuring that the entity at any one time can continue whether you change these individuals or they continue and they obey the manuals as M Noah has stated. Mm. It is that the pain of enforcing those manuals, those processes, and the way sometimes it denies you your shortcuts. Mm. That's where people begin to take shortcuts mm. and a bit of uh, abuse of corporate governance principles. So to me, It is one thing even for you to put the, the manuals in place. Yeah. Another one for you to now <laughs> take the pain and just say, I think I better follow this. It is. That's why in banking, when you go and borrow, they tell you, we want audited accounts. Mm. The assumption there is that you have got no more records going on somewhere. Mm. And somebody is just using those records to try and come up with an audited position. Yes. The assumption might also be again that you have an auditor who keeps checking what's going on mm. in the organization. Mm. But many times we submit those documents to the bank for the sake of getting the loan. Mm. Not because you want to adopt the practices associated with taking three audited accounts. Mm. So you, it comes down to um, the discipline 
to accept that the entity is bigger than all the individuals in it. Yes. And then to accept the fact that the entity will grow when the things are followed. And as the entity grows, sustainability will be ensured. So from what I read um, mm. in your submission, Charles, there's some power you seed as an owner yes. to the system, to yeah. the structures that you put in place and the people that Correct. are superintending Correct. those structures and systems. And in the beginning, that seeding of power looks painful mm. because you think, haven't I been reduced by these financial requirements? Mm. The cashier, I'm removing the money from saying, both sign here. Or he's first asking you questions. Yes, what? yeah, what are you taking? Because I need to put it on paper. <laughs> My manual says when I lose, I remove any money from here, yes. I need to document it. Yes. Now, yes. you are taking it. For what, sir? Mm. Are you borrowing? <laughs> are you buying an item that should have been bought by the other department, mm. but this time you are the one buying it? Mm. Mm. Please, sir, can you explain? Mm. That's one. Mm. Two is <laughs> telling you that, sir, the way the thing is going on, it seems this one is an approval of my boss. Mm. Now you are bigger than all those people. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you feel hurt. Mm. Or sometimes it's denied. Yes, I actually can say, no, for now, I think I, it's not right to do this. With reasons. Yes. <laughs> so that kind of pain mm. in the beginning is mm. so, you, you take a while to adjust. Mm. But the moment you allow systems to flow, mm you begin to see the joy of saying, I do not need to check every nitty gritty or transaction taking place. There is a report that comes talking about purchases for the week. Mm. There's a report that says these are the salaries for the week. Mm. There's a report which says this is the rent we paid. Mm. Now you don't need to have checked and done all those yourself. Mm. It pays back to you. Mm. But right. you need to have gone through the pains mm. of accepting the systems to release you from being inside the mess of doing the small nitty gritty. So in the end, when you adopt it, you love it. Thank you, Charles. Mm. Now, um, <coughs> viewers, if you notice keenly uh, Charles's submission, mm. we are also trying to answer the question that many of us keep asking ourselves, why are our businesses collapsing early? Mm. Why don't we see cross-generational Mm. businesses. Mm. It begins mm. with adherence to such principles mm. like mm. corporate governance. Uh, broken down into small practices. You know, like dipping your hand in the coffers of the business every time you want. And, and like, Mia Kashia was telling you, please, <laughs> don't Zab, do if it. I can do this, <laughs> don't do this at you that. need some approvals. Absolutely. <laughs> Noah, uh, this is the point where I bring you in. I know you've had your experience as well, uh, you know, um, dealing with businesses, you know, as a business development uh, service expert. Um, what do you have to say about that? I mean, why is it so costly, um, you know, uh, in the short run, you know, in addition to what Charles has said, uh, to some of these, uh, you know, good, uh, good business entrepreneurs to actually adopt? Uh, uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, actually, it is not costly. I'm talking about the pain and the, uh, yes, the emotion the, cost. Exactly. Mm. You know, you know in, in, mm. in business, when you talk about costs, yes. someone yes. starts to think about money getting yes. lost yes. or <laughs> profits reduced. The numbers. Yes. yes. So it's not, the, the cost is actually emotional. Mm. Mm. It is not anything to do with, um, with the actual loss of money. Yeah. In mm. fact, mm. when you put, first and foremost, putting in place most of those practices mm. is even cost free. Mm -hmm. I can give an example. Uh, look at manuals, mm -hmm. good practices in procurement, human resource management, uh, operations management. W you can even go online mm -hmm. to an open source and you get documents you can refer to to even create your own. Mm -hmm. You don't need so much uh, investment. Even mm -hmm. if it is there, it is basically to get an expert to do that kind of teasing mm -hmm. of the right information, contextualizing of this information mm -hmm. to what you do. So getting the practices on board is easier. That's mm -hmm. why you find a lot of people with manuals shelved. They even do business plans which they don't use. Mm -hmm. you, find, you go, you visit them, you'll find those documents there. Mm -hmm. Using them is the challenge. Why is it the challenge? It goes back to the emotion. Mm. Sometimes, you know, you've started this business and you feel you need some bit of presence in the business every day <laughs> as the founder <laughs> or as the owner. So what does that mean? It means you, you, 
you are always looking at what everyone is doing, sometimes when it is not necessary. Mm -hmm. For example, if I have cameras in an institution, at the gate, in the compound, in the various departments, I, don't, I may not need to come and be on everyone's desk every day. Mm -hmm. If I have, a, uh, uh, um, if I have uh, staff who have uh, you know, computers or whatever documents they use to execute their duties, which I can look at weekly. I don't need to be on them every day. Mm. So the issue is most of us are fear to try the good practices. One, because we fear we'll lose power. Mm. Two, because we fear that uh, maybe the people we have around are not as good mm. as us. Mm. But I usually tell uh, people, if, if you have uh, people at home who maintain your home, whether it is uh, those who do outdoor work or indoor work, and are not as qualified as the ones you have mm. in, in, in your office. Mm. If you have, if you give them the autonomy to do the, all the mixtures to prepare a meal for you, which you come and eat without vetting when you return home from work, mm -hmm. why, why would you be so worried about what someone with a PhD or with a master's or with a bachelor's degree can do if you give them the autonomy mm -hmm. and power to do it in your office? Mm -hmm. you, you, after assuming <laughs> people in office cannot do work without you, you return mm -hmm. to a meal. Mm. which has been prepared by someone who perhaps does not, who, who only tests the soup and, the, and, 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 you know, smells the scent and the flavor of the food and they are like, this is good. Mm -hmm. You eat the food at home which has been prepared by someone who's not a very sophisticated expert mm -hmm. without questioning, mm -hmm. but you tell us that you are uncomfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> living your life savings <laughs> with a graduate <laughs> who is even uh, certified by a global body, SCCA, mm. CPA, mm. CIPS, uh, CIM, mm. Makere mm. University, and, and any other, mm. you know, at whichever level the person has got the qualification from. Mm. So I think we need to, to uh, g wake up to the reality that first and foremost, even if you want, you're not going to be in that business for 100 years. Mm. Uh, at mm. least we have enough data now that... Uh, uh, we don't have a 150-year-old person living mm. in the world. Mm. Mm. Eh? Mm. Perhaps even one 30 years, we may not be having. So mm. you will go, whether you want it or not. Now, <laughs> no one wants to live and their business follows them. Yeah. It's not something I, I believe no one wants. That's why mm. we're always saying, mm. you know, mm. yeah. I'm doing this for my children. Mm -hmm. It is for my legacy. Yeah. So one thing you do to be sure that your legacy is intact, eh? you give yourself an opportunity to, to, to go out of your areas of jurisdiction and see whether things will continue the way they go on when you're around. Mm. And that when way is only uh, attained when you are able to put system structures in place, mm. uh, the governance practices in place, delegate authority in an organized manner, which mm. comes back to what I was, uh, the, the, the explanation I was using to define corporate governance. Try to create a way of your business progressing perfectly mm. in an imperfect environment. Uh, business mm. environment. So, mm. so we need to, 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 to appreciate that actually you, you, the, the cost you're talking about is emotional. Mm. <laughs> as as <the> Charles <laughs> expressed, it is actually most times not even monetary. Mm. <laughs> Allow the, your institution mm. to operate without you for a day or two. See if you can take leave. See mm. if you... Uh, says, uh, be sure that if, 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 if you are away for six months, you will not die because the business has died since you left. Eh? You I know, did. sometimes you get in a situation and you find you can't be at work every day. Mm. Either you're sick or something happens, and you have to be away for six months. But you find most people are not stressed by the sickness, which has got them out of, out of their business. Mm -hmm. They are more stressed by what is going to happen to the business when they are away. Very so, true. So, so corporate governance is, is important. It, it's something we need to, to, to get involved in and be very realistic. Mm. You can delegate slowly by slowly. You don't mm. need to start everything at once. Mm. Start mm. to mm. allow your juniors, for example, to make small basic approvals for things mm. and then check how mm. they've been doing mm. it for a week. If there are things which need to be fixed, if you're losing money or if they are not doing perfectly the way you would do it, mm. teach them or put in place a, a policy mm. or a review mechanism yes. that mm. perfects it. Thank if you. you do that, then you'll be on the right track. On the right track yeah. for that. Thank you, Noah. Um, quite interesting. And uh, again, it begs a question because, you, like you rightly put it, because what, what I deduct from the submissions mm. is uh, mm. 
corporate governance involves the aspect of building structures, mm. you know, to ensure efficiency, accuracy, mm. and then of course meet the expectations of different mm. stakeholders. And authority, now, it means that you need people to do, you know, uh, that work because systems are operated by people. Mm at the end of the day. Mm. Now, it brings me to the reality in the market because mm. you've had so many entrepreneurs, I'm sure, in your experience, mm. uh, Charles, where someone mm. tells you, you see, it is very problematic to get workers that are dedicated, mm. to get mm. workers that are committed. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. And uh, <laughs> it begs a question, mm. uh, where does corporate governance begin and start? Does it sit with the side of the business owner alone? or even the employees. In other words, how do we prepare <coughs> mm. our workforce or employees mm. to sit in this grand scheme yeah. called corporate government gov Correct. governance that we are working on? Very good. The first starting point is that um, the word trust comes into the center of the game. Mm. The moment you come up with the systems, policies, you want to trust that employees that you have are honest and they are willing to learn. Mm. Now, if you have gotten that trust, recognize that the people you are trusting are imperfect and they will require continuous nurturing and building. Mm. You may have reached where you've reached after 7, 8, 10, 15 years of errors, learning, errors, picking up again. Mm. The people you are beginning to bring into this entity have just entered. The same thing with your son. Yeah. For a long time, your son has been a little boy that you took to primary, then secondary, then university. You've never quite gotten over the fact that he's a little boy. The little boy is saying, Daddy, I want to start taking over this. Mm. For you, are saying, that is not how it's done. Mm. You young boy, I don't know why you, when you will ever learn anything, and you are removing him immediately. Mm. You are too impatient. You don't want to allow the young man to pick the ropes the way you did seven years ago, yeah. 15 years ago. Mm. Now, because this young man is so raw and wants to be given that learning curve, you are so impatient and you feel it should come up to your standard almost overnight. Mm. If you have that impatience and lack of trust in the team, corporate governance will take a long time for it to become part of your story. Because yeah, yeah. you are seeing errors everywhere, mm. and you feel you are the best. You mm. feel you should grab it again. Mm. You need to take it away again. And the meetings you have with your staff are really whining yes. uh, sessions. Really. How useless <laughs> everybody is. <laughs> yes. Now, mm. if you do not recognize that you also took time to learn what you've learned, yeah. you have a big problem. So you, the person putting corporate governance systems, must also be willing to learn on how to make these systems mm. to sit into the team. Mm. Two, they take time to begin to be absorbed and practiced. Mm. Three, they need refinement. You start with what you have. You could start with a few basics that you know what, we're starting by reporting time. That's a starting point in your HR manual, mm. <laughs> reporting time. Mm. And when you report, I don't want people who are on, uh, on the phone or whatever, something like that. Mm. And then please recognize that all of you have got targets, something basic. Mm. Then over time, you begin to sophisticate it and say, you know what, you're a manager. I want you also to be building others. Mm. I'm adding that as part of your responsibility. Mm -hmm. How many people are you building to create a solid team mm. for succession? Yeah. But you, be, you work out all those. So when people hear the word corporate governance, there's no magical instrument that you now feel this is 1,000 grams to make a kilo. Mm -hmm. You keep on building and building and building and building and depending on the different stages, you keep on adding them. Mm -hmm. Even things like an audit, internal auditor. Mm -hmm. You may not have somebody fully paid on your payroll in the beginning, yeah. but you'll get somebody coming in to just look at your records once a month. Yeah. You're already practicing the checking aspects of corporate governance. Mm. The third eye, which says, this is what you have done, may I check? They said they made the sales of loaves. I've just checked. The loaves they are saying they made sales on seem to be fewer than the raw material of ngano mm. they have spent. Mm. 
Can you try to reconcile those two? But you didn't have a full-time internal auditor. Mm. But because you appreciate the power of a third eye, mm. you get somebody to just start doing that. Mm. Later you will have a full-time internal auditor. But probably even at a level of below what you call a conventional certified auditor. Somebody who has just done a bit of commerce can begin to take you there. Mm. So people should not imagine that because it is at a certain pitch, mm. me, that animal, I need to wait for another 10 years. You can get on it as quickly as you can. As you can. Mm. And the other thing also is, as the enterprise gets bigger and more sophisticated, mm. the more you need to get these systems to adjust to reflect that picture. Mm. Mukwano Group discovered that the Mukwano brand had become so large that in the real estate alone, it was such a big animal. Mm. And then on the manufacturing angle alone, it was such a big animal. Mm. In the corporate governance, they now said, let's have a group where at the top there's chairman of the group. Mm. But below that are two entities. Mm. One is now for real estate. The other one is for manufacturing operations. Mm. Mm. So you need to be adjusting and reflecting the nature of your own growth yeah. as an entity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. And mm. uh, you can clearly see um, we are talking, at the end of the day, succession. Mm. Because like, uh, I think Noah rightly put it, no one's mm. going to live for 100 years or 150 <laughs> years. But when you visit <laughs> countries like Japan, yes, you'll find companies yes. that have been there for hundreds of years. Yes. And yes. Uh, yes. you wonder how they've made it. Yeah. And I think it comes down... 1759 is Guinness. Uh -huh, exactly. 1759. <laughs> <laughs> A favorite to many. <laughs> Exactly. So, yes. um, and it comes back mm. to the issue that we are discussing today. So, mm. um, uh, like we say, we want to keep this show as practical as possible. Um, we know there are quite a number of you that are running business enterprises, operations. And uh, you could be having a question or two. There's a WhatsApp number on the screen. You can forward that question uh, or experience. And we hear from you for the others to pick lessons from. Um, we have the expert in the studios here. Uh, Noah, um, the issue of um, finding, because what could be running in the mind of an entrepreneur, probably someone who has, you know, started businesses, where do I begin? You know, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little hard for people to make that leap and move from informal operation or mm. way of doing business, because the number of business people you go and talk to and they'll tell you, me, I know, I understand my business. Business is here. It's here. It's in the mind. But probably its turnover is in hundreds, if not billions of shillings. Mm. How do you mm. tell such a person, you know, what would you tell him? Where should they begin <laughs> on this journey? Uh, thank you, uh, Charles. Uh, the starting point is to ask yourself, if I was not here for a day or for a week for, or for a month, what would happen to my business? That is important. Mm. You know, most of us, even by culture, mm. we are just accustomed to living each day as it comes. Mm. But when you start to ask yourself, hmm, wh what if I'm not around tomorrow? What if I have an engagement and I can't be in office early to, to open the offices? Who else can open if you're the only one who keeps kids? Mm. So the sense of achievement is of course a good feeling. Yeah. Yes, you can of course say business young and together. Eh? I started it. Where it is is because of me. Mm. But some, you know, you have one head. You only have two arms. You have two legs. Your clock. You, you, a day you have twenty-four hours. Mm. Your business may grow to a level where those are no longer enough. So the question. And here I mainly talk to those who are interested in growing. You know, there are people in the marketplace who say, ah, what I've done is enough. I don't want to grow beyond here. Mm -hmm. So this may, uh, you know, succession mm -hmm. planning definitely, for example, does not come to, uh, bec become necessary to you. You're not interested in, uh, in, in going beyond you. Mm -hmm. But for those who are interested in going beyond themselves in terms of delivery, in terms of performance, you need to ask yourself, if I was not around, can my business progress without me? If it cannot, then you start to ask yourself, mm. what can I do to ensure that work goes on normally 
whether I'm around or not. Let me give you a small basic uh, example. Just look at an example of office keys. Hmm? Everything in your company's premises is yours. True. But if you're someone who doesn't, who is never the first at office or not always the first at office, the one thing to do usually is get other responsible members of your team and give them spare keys to office. So that whether you're late or not, someone mm -hmm. is going to open at the right time when mm -hmm. customers start coming in mm -hmm. and then business will progress as mm -hmm. usual. You have delegated the responsibility of opening and closing of business premises. Mm -hmm. You are enabling business to continue on a normal day even before you arrive mm -hmm. at office. So there are those small things. Don't, mm -hmm. like we said, these issues are not from uh, very far. Mm -hmm. They are within us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. English may not be our mother uh, 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 language for, all, for most of us, but let's get to the basics. So start mm -hmm. to, s to, to, to allow your team members to do roles mm. that you have been doing in a safe manner to allow the business to progress, whether you are around mm. or not around. Mm. Th th that's why I use that example, this mm. example yeah. of who keeps the, the, the office keys. Then yeah. when you come around, mm. you can audit and say, okay, did they open the right time? Uh, everything is still in place, nothing has been stolen. And then you're like, yeah, mm. this is a practice we need to maintain. Mm. The other one can be uh, reporting time. Mm. Yeah. I don't need to be standing at the gate uh, like a teacher on duty to check who <laughs> is entering and what they're entering. <laughs> I can put a, a book mm. for registering. Yes. These days, even books were abused. I can put the biometric registration <laughs> where people come, <laughs> you press your finger, mm. then the machine registers the time wh when you've walked in. Yeah. So, so <laughs> those are some small basic practices, yes. very cheap practices to bring yeah. on board, yeah. but which restore order mm -hmm. or bring order mm -hmm. in your business premises. Mm -hmm. Start mm -hmm. with those. Mm -hmm. As people start to know that, you know, by 7 a.m. I should be in office or 8, if they start to know that when I request for funds to go and do an activity, I must spend the money carefully and then bring accountability then your institution will start to operate well. Mm -hmm. Then, whether you are around or not around, as the business owner, you will be sure yeah. business will continue mm -hmm. uh, as usual or even grow. Mm -hmm. So those are the small basic practices. Don't focus on uh, the other big uh, audits. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Uchich has explained. You may not have a mm -hmm. full audit, internal audit department. Exactly. But g get uh, you know, someone who can walk in mm -hmm. and say, okay, let me look at how the amount of money you spent this week. Mm -hmm. Let me look at the, the volume of, of uh, product that mm -hmm. you took out this week mm -hmm. to see if they compare. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that does not require you to be any sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Correct. Really, even if Correct. you're running a, a roadside the kiosk, mm -hmm. that's something you can do. Mm -hmm. yes. Very true. Yeah. Very so true. so mm -hmm. let's get uh, uh, away from uh, you know this thinking of you know these are big. Uh, broad words for people yes. with ties, earning money <laughs> in millions <laughs> for us to do. These are basic good manners mm. for any business. Mm. Eh? Mm. Just like you say, before I eat a meal, whether it is chicken or beef or beans or peas, I should wash hands. Mm. That's what corporate governance is. Mm. Those simple, mm. basic, but very important things mm. that perfect the way you do business, irrespective of how imperfect the business environment where you operate is. It becomes your culture. Yeah. I Charles. want to pick up things that he has touched again that mm. should really make people to begin to go this route. Mm. He mentioned some two key words. Delegation. Mm. Delegation means at some point you will not be at that enterprise. It could be a family crisis. Mm. It could be sickness, personal issue. It could be a business deal that has taken you somewhere. Mm. Somebody must continue to serve. Mm. The, the customer. Mm. Because this entity here is simply saying, to me, I've got customers to serve. Yeah. If you do not put in systems that will allow that to continue, I'm going to suffer. Mm. The business will suffer. Mm. So if you want the word delegation to make meaning, it doesn't make meaning without clarity of responsibilities. Mm. And that clarity comes with the systems, with the proper manuals. Mm. It's clearly saying that so and so this is your area of responsibility. So and so these are the reports that I need from you. Mm. So delegation, a word we love so much. Be <laughs> you, why, didn't, why didn't you delegate? Mm. Why didn't you delegate? Mm. It comes with clarity mm. of the entire atmosphere. Because the moment the service says, 
I, I told you to be here, now I found you here. Then again, he finds you there. I said, I told you to be this way, now mm. you are this end. Mm. You kill the morale of the team. I think that's a good one, Charles, because uh, the number of times mm. when you find uh, a new hire, a new employee in a company, yeah. and they're trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And I think it goes back to a discussion we had on yes. business planning. Yeah. Yeah. Because it should define yeah. the roles of every employee that you have. And I Very think true. that is quite powerful. It is, mm. because a professional does not want to appear dense, stupid, mm. because of basic lack of what he should have been doing. Mm. And all that is because the everything is ad hoc. Mm -hmm. Governance requires things to become structured. Mm -hmm. So immediately that happens, you can delegate properly. Mm. Two, things will continue when you are not there. Mm. Three, the staff morale is lifted up. But four, he again hinted on it, consistency of solution delivery. Mm. Because of the systems, I can now predict that when I go to Cafe Javas on Kira Road, most likely the meal is going to be similar to Cafe Javas at Kampala Boulevard. Mm. The systems have just brought about consistency. Yeah. There's a way you mix the, the, the onions, the way you mix the tomatoes, the way you do the, 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 the panning in the own fire, all that is covered in the manuals. Yeah. Now, you will now be saying, the moment you see the brand, Cafe Javas, mm. uh, I know exactly what I expect. Mm. 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 You know exactly how long you are going to sit on that chair before somebody comes to say, what can I serve you? Mm. Mm. Because all that has been standardized mm. through systems and structure. Mm. So you see the benefits are deep. Mm. Consistency. Mm. Good delegation. Yes. People are now knowing what they are supposed to do. The, the, the team is happy. Mm. Nobody is uh, a little bit uh, jittery because you seem to be looking dense because every day you are being told what to do. Mm. No human being likes to be reminded <laughs> on simple things on a daily basis. Mm. And there is a lot that is lost in terms yeah. of productivity and all that. Yeah, yeah. Noah, um, mm. uh, moving on, I want to look at this thing from, again, a practical point of view, especially... Because mm. we all appreciate, for some reason, I don't know whether it's by accident or like, mm. a number of elites are not in your typical business operations. They're not business owners. Mm. Uh, a number of elites are actually employees in certain places. Mm. Now, you're going to find that uh, your typical Ugandan businessman is probably educated to a certain level, mm. or he didn't step in class at all and probably mm. worked around. Mm. I know Charles has worked with a number mm. to try and... Uh, Mm. you know, put them together to fit in the new roles. Yeah. Uh, now, um, if you speak to a number of them, um, you know, some will tell you, when you hire some of these young men, they are too sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and if you give them too much authority, <laughs> before you know it, <laughs> your business is gone. <laughs> you get. So um, how do you <coughs> give reassurance to such a Ugandan? And I know it's a bulk of them. <laughs> uh, they have the money, they've grown to a certain point. In fact, yeah. that's why some of them you'll find they'll have reservations mm. about growing beyond <laughs> a certain level because yes. it goes beyond what they can monitor yes. and probably wrap their mind around. Yes, memory. Exactly. They use memory <laughs> to try and run things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what kind of reassurance can you give such a person? Because I don't know these are the guys that are driving this economy to actually embrace this uh, principle and uh, have their fears probably, you know, addressed in a, in, in, in a sense? Uh, thank you. Uh, very good question. The, the, we need always to provide a business case mm. for everything we are suggesting. Mm. And the business case means what? Uh, show that gentleman or gentle lady mm. how much they lose by not having structures in place. How much money are you losing by fearing to hire more staff because you ca you, there will be too many for you to supervise? Mm. Uh, for example, right now we have very simple basic applications which can monitor vehicles moving. So I don't need to be very sophisticated in terms of education to monitor every truck I own mm. across mm. the world. Mm. Mm. So what I only need to do is invest some money in the tracking and then buy as many vehicles. Mm. 
I don't need to say, oh, I can only manage one vehicle because that one I'll be sitting in with the driver. Mm -hmm. So wherever he's going, I'm with him, I can control. But for you to, 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 to know these things, you must associate with people who are knowledgeable mm -hmm. about them. So I would encourage anyone to invest in knowing. For people who are doing, who have big, more vehicles on the road than me, assuming <coughs> I'm operating, uh, I'm a transporter of produce. Mm -hmm. Mm. I have one truck. I'm fearing to buy another one because I cannot be managing both of them at the sa on the same day at the same time. Mm. Mm. Then I'll go and ask myself, how does Aponye manage his? Mm. How does Mandela Miller's manage theirs? How mm. does Delight or Cheers manage mm. theirs? Mm. Because mm. they have so many vehicles on the mm. road mm. at the same time. Mm. How does Arazi and Shine mm. manage their trucks? Mm. Uh, mm. Some are taking the milled product, others are bringing in mm. uh, 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 the, the maize uh, grain for, for milling. Mm. So you must have personal hunger to know more. Mm. If you're the type who celebrates uh, the small things you have achieved or the big things, then it is difficult for you to grow beyond that level. But secondly, now to the feared young men and young women, who are educated, who the bosses may say, oh, if I give them too much power, uh, they will uh, uh, take my business <laughs> with me. Mm. The, the issue is whenever you're going to interest your supervisors or your superiors in anything, highlight why we need it as an institution. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that one truck earns for us 10 million a year. Mm. If we bring in nine trucks, we'll be earning the 10 plus more 90 million of the nine trucks, mm -hmm. making it a total of 100 million per year. But to truck each vehicle per year, you only need uh, 500,000 shillings mm -hmm. or 200,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I'm investing more 5 million to earn 90 million, which I was missing. Mm -hmm. There is nobody who will not uh, find that interesting. Very so true. you must move beyond Kanoka Kola. Mm. Mm. These days, this is what people are using mm -hmm. to showing whoever you're interested or the decision maker in your institution that this is what mm -hmm. is working. Mm -hmm. It reduces business costs by this margin and it increases our profitability by this margin. I can tell you, all businessmen, whether they're educated or not, want to become bigger. Mm. He's yeah. pursuing the next one million. He's pursuing the next one billion. Mm. He's pursuing the next plot of land. He's mm. pursuing uh, 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 the next farm. Mm. The mm. moment you show them that you're there to help them achieve that, mm. they will be with you. And that brings us to uh, the issue of your contribution to the institution where you are. Mm. What mm. value do you add? Are you just there to, to, to warm a seat? and be counted when people who count people come in the organization, or you're there to add value to the institution. So mm -hmm. we, it's our responsibility to assure whoever we work with that we have a role and we are, our intentions are good. For That's a good business. one. Thanks. Yeah, there, there was something uh, 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 Mr. Ochichi mentioned on, um, on people not liking to be told the same thing mm -hmm. all every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do you know, there are, I know there are businesses where people don't even want to be delegated to. <laughs> the boss says, I want to leave you as the manager for one week. You say, ah, <laughs> boss, no, 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 no. Me, let me stay where I am. I <laughs> rather chop wood. Yes. <laughs> oh, you find the uh, parents <laughs> crying. You see, yeah. uh, for the last 30 years I've built this business, but all my children don't want to come and do what? Mm. And, and sit in it. Mm. And, and sit in it. Mm. Mm. You are the problem. <laughs> the problem is not the children. <laughs> the problem is not the, the staff who mm. do not want to stay mm. in your shoes when you are away. Mm. Uh, let me give you an example. You may be a very generous boss. Uh, and maybe when people come to your office, you give them money. You say, oh, touch your pockets, give 5,000. Another one comes, you touch your pockets, you give 10,000. Now, when you leave me in as a manager, when you have not given me guidelines on how I should be giving money out the way you give it out, <laughs> people are going to hate me. Mm. They will say, ah, ah when we this know a guy is around, mm. we go hungry. Mm. 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 Because uh, he can't give us anything. At mm. least when the boss is around, mm. with the whole He's place understanding. is happy. Mm. He's understanding. But the problem <laughs> is not Noah. The problem <laughs> is that we have someone who is 
leading the institutions but without clear structures yeah. about how money is given. Yeah. So when he wants to leave me in charge, I have no tools. I'm not empowered mm -hmm. to give money. <laughs> but if I have a policy which says anyone who works in this office <laughs> should receive 5,000 shillings as their transport refund, even if I've left uh, whoever in the organization in that office, mm -hmm. they'll open the safe, get money out, give it to you, you sign somewhere, and that will be okay. So that's why that's they call running business on moods. Yes. Mm. The same applies to children. <laughs> mm. Mm. Some, some of, 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 of our parents who yes. own businesses never tell us exactly how they make money. Yeah. Mm. Eh? Mm. Mm. You don't hear about them saying we had a meeting as staff to decide on what to do. You no never hear them saying anything. No, like I, I have to come in there because that's a very, very powerful one. You know, in See. my experience as... Uh, a business journalist for almost 20 years. Mm. I've, I've listened to certain stories, and uh, somewhere, somehow, you find you fail to get the coherence of how someone moved from point B to mm. C. Mm. And uh, could it be that, because you know, some of these probably we sleepwalk into success, success positions, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then when they tell you to trace back, yeah. How you actually arrived here? Yeah, <laughs> you can't give because you can't give what you don't have. <laughs> yeah, true. You know you don't know how you came here. Uh, true. Charles, I don't know yeah. what your experience is in mm. that and what we lose one mm. as businesses and as a country. Yeah, because of that. I must say that, um, and it connects with your earlier question mm. where you said that somebody is saying here brilliant young people coming in and now I'm trying to release them to my thing and yeah, I think I might end up losing my fortunes which I fought over the years. Mm. And I want to say this, that um, if there's one thing a business person must never release and completely embrace forever, mm. is remaining a learner. Yeah. And remaining a learner requires that um, you have put in systems in a place for a reason. Mm. Why did you put those systems there? He was making pointers. He mm. said, so and so called Ma Mandela Millers is doing that and it seems to be making sense. Bore a leaf, mm. put it there, mm. learn. The thing of imagining that because of your past, you must continue to repeat what worked at that point when numbers are growing, mm customers are becoming bigger, yeah. the competition is growing, mm. your own staff are beginning to say, you man, you are holding us back, but we have learned how to make this thing work. Mm. We now want to go and start a parallel operation. Mm. You will be swept away quickly. So that humility to keep learning. Yeah. And the key thing in the learning journey is asking, probing questions. Mm. Why should I hire you? The fellow should answer. Yeah. You know, when you hire me, this is what I will do. Yes. Then you, as the business leader, yeah. process that answer. Mm -hmm. See the logic in it. If the logic has got an element of adding value to the customer mm. and bring customer loyalty, mm. bring customer growth, hire the fellow. But as you hire the fellow, remember what he answered. Document it and let the fellow go with what he, he said he would be able to do. Mm. So ability to always keep asking questions questions and then processing those answers and seeing how to make the best out of those responses mm. will create a great leader who will never be scared of systems, who will never be scared of professionals, mm. who will never be scared of corporate governance. Good point. Mm. He raised another very important point which is again mm. related to that and I mm. think is very important for our viewers. Mm. Um, of course he brought out uh, and you bring it, Charles, out as well. The rationality yeah. of business people. Yes. Any businessman, yeah. they smell money. Mm. Yes. They are aspirational. Yes. They want to achieve. So yes. the moment you give ideas that can lead them there, or Correct. seem to lead them there, Correct. they will listen. They will listen. And, and the issue of saying you are not educated yes. for a businessman does not even arise. Yes. Yes. Because for them, the real education that matters is the one on the ground. And they can smell the money. Yes. What we call achievement. That education where they ask appropriate questions mm. and they looked at a computer, they looked at a, an expert, and they got the education from mm. there. Mm. That education to a business person is much more practical and you. more value adding than even putting them through a very structured two year diploma 
in the procurement. As we go for the break, mm. Charles, I want you to weigh in on this. Mm. Because we live in a very, we are at a very, very tricky confluence or point in time mm. where a number of employees uh, have lost jobs because of you know downsizing that has come with the impact of COVID on business operations. Mm. Others, like we always say, are barely surviving to see mm. the next day. Mm. Um, what kind of advice would you give to an employee in today's environment? Mm. Because not everyone is going to own a business mm. or be a business owner. Some of us mm. are well refined and grounded mm. as leaders <laughs> of businesses started by someone else. Mm. And we can do justice and be good at that <laughs> yes, yes. as much as others are good as business mm. proprietors mm. and owners. Yeah. Um, what attribute, key attribute would you say an employee, a winning employee mm. would have or should have in this equation of structured business operations that we are talking about at this point in time? I think the first thing now is if you are living in the circumstances where we are today, one of the things you need to embrace is flexibility. Mm. You call yourself a teacher of mathematics. Yeah. The schools have been closed for a year. And you don't know when it might be time to go back. Mm. And if it's time to go back, you do not know how many more maths teachers may be required. Or they are going to say, you know, we used to have seven of you. Yeah. We're going to get half of you for the time being yeah. until we pick up the, yeah. the momentum again. Yeah. So the flexibility I'm talking about now is you now say, okay, my core responsibility used to be mathematics, mm. but I'm also good in physics. Mm. Is it possible now that I start getting to a point whereby I sell myself mm. on two subjects yeah. as opposed to talking about your mathematics? Two, it is also possible for you to now say, I have more time on my hands. I'm now not taken on full-time basis, not because somebody hates me. Yeah. I'm being told to have only three lessons in a week. Mm. I used to have ten. Now three in a week. And for those three, they are going to give me partial payment. Mm. What do you do with the rest of the other time? Mm. This is the time to start saying, you know what, uh, I have this plot of mine, but there's a small area which is open. Mm. Put chicken there and start mm. feeding chicken. Yes. Flexibility is very key in times like this. Mm. Two, ability to learn from others on what others have been doing, and you thought that was not for you, mm. but they are yes. making money out of that. Yeah. Begin to go and say, you know, you don't speak good English, but what I'm seeing you doing with the pigs mm. is admirable. Mm. You are the major supplier of pork for many outlets here. Can I understudy you for a bit of time? Mm. Be able to learn from there. But after you've learned, start with what you have. Mm -hmm. To start making a living, to start making yourself relevant. The world is still looking for solution givers. Yeah. And they are not going to necessarily say, now you are delivering pork, have you done a, a degree in veterinary mm. uh, something or agriculture? They just want meat. Mm. Give them the meat. Mm. And that mm. comes with that mindset of flexibility and yes. ability to adapt. Yes, yes. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, we're going to take a very short commercial break. We are unpacking the topic of corporate governance, you know, anchoring it on s building sustainable businesses, and then, you know, uh, by extension, succession planning. We'll be picking a lot of your questions. I'm seeing quite a number of questions coming in from as far as Eldoret in Kenya. Uh, so we have quite a number of viewership across the region. Because, like we always say, the business language is a unique. It's still the business X-ray, and uh, we are unpacking the topic of uh, building sustainable businesses through adherence to corporate governance, and then, of course, the aspect of uh, succession planning. And we've had a lot, right from you know trying to break down the concept of uh, corporate governance, and now we know why it's important for businesses. Um, maybe. Before we go to some of the questions and comments that are coming through, uh, no, I will come through uh, to you uh, quite fast on um, what it takes or it would take someone to actually uh, embrace corporate governance. Mm. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Charles. The embracing corporate governance comes from one, your ambitions. Where do you want to go? Yeah. Mm. It also because you see, when you, 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 you start getting interested in having a company 
existing for 500 years, mm. you start to become humble. Yeah. Your pride of I'm the best CEO, I'm the best entrepreneur around town, ceases to matter. Mm. You now start to ask yourself, what do I need to put in place to ensure that my company will continue going forward? And this goes, to, by the way, to both the founders mm. and the staff. Mm -hmm. yeah? Before we went for the commercial break, we were talking about people who are only good at managing businesses which have been started. Yes. Yeah. But maybe they, are may, they may not be keen mm. at starting businesses of their own. Mm. Whether the business is yours or you're working for somebody, mm. if you're interested in the furtherance of that business, mm. you start to ask yourself, how do we proceed going forward? Mm -hmm. How are we moving from a fleet of two cars to a thousand cars? Mm. How are we moving from one branch head office, actually not even a branch, one head office mm. to branches all over the country. Mm. You now start to work on growth plans. Mm. You now start to work on uh, risk management plans. Mm. People are going to be many. Mm. We will not be looking at all of them. Mm. We need to have a system that manages them. Mm. Uh, cars are going to be many. We will not be able to uh, be looking at what everybody, every driver is doing. We need to put a system. Mm. We, need, we are going to borrow money because our savings are not enough. Mm. You need to put in place mm. uh, policies that guide how you borrow. Mm which interest rates are acceptable mm -hmm. for you based on the, the, the profits you're making, mm. all those come from a realization of where you want to, to go. Be. How mm. are you planning for your future? How are you planning to manage and maintain the success that you have, you have got? There is a mistake we make. I think we mentioned it some time back when we were talking about uh, internal controls. Yes. Uh, where someone assumes because I've been a good teacher mm. or because I've been a good farmer mm. or because I've been a good agriculture extensionist mm. I can be a good trader of produce mm. I can be a good uh, owner, of, a owner school. of schools mm. I can be a good uh, processor of a mm. commodity say of, of, of maize flour mm. that is very far from true uh, because your skills are at managing a student if mm. you have been a good teacher Mm. Your expertise in making sure they don't make noise in class, you do good lesson plans. You have not managed an institution that has uh, people who are non-teaching staff working mm. on compounds. You mm. have not had a uh, hundred teachers all looking up to you for salaries. Mm. You've not had been in a situation where you want to increase the number of classrooms because the numbers of students are increasing and mm. you don't have that, those savings and you need to go to borrow. So mm. don't assume because you have been good at math or physics, <laughs> that you will be a successful <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> in the space of private schools. Yeah. You need to be humble enough, mm. look for experts who mm. have learned how to manage institutions, mm. get them to work for you, or to work, to teach you how to work, to do that, so that you, also, you expand your knowledge. Most mm. of us have information in our heads. Mm. Mm? When you say, I'm a graduate of uh, uh, this course, you're actually telling us that you have information about that course in your head. Now, what changes the world is not information. Mm. What changes the world is knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge mm. is actionable information. Mm. Most of us have information. Heads are full of information. We can mm. recite. Mm. You can mm. say, uh, <laughs> John 3.16, for God so loved the world that <laughs> yeah. he gave his only begotten son. Mm. But you're yes. still not saved. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. So you have the information <laughs> in your head. <laughs> yes. But the purpose for God's son coming to this world, yes. which, which you should adhere to <laughs> make you a good Christian, <laughs> you're not doing it. So you are not knowledgeable mm. about the purpose of the Bible verse, yes. but you are aware of it. There's that, fam so, there's so that famous verse of uh, Jesus turning water into wine. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to move from the space of <laughs> knowing things to the space, rather to the space of being informed about things, mm. to the space of knowing them mm. and actioning or putting into practice the information and knowledge so that we make changes. That's In what succession planning is about. That's you. what corporate governance is, is about. about. Yeah. Thank you very much, Noah. And that information, actually, actionable information has to be, you know, um, worked on in uh, a structured environment. Exactly. Yes. And that's what we've been discussing here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, I think at this point, we can look at um, some of the messages that have come through. We have quite a number. Mm. But let me, please allow me to start with the compliments. I have Dr. Ali. Ali is watching from Embu in Kenya. Mm. He's saying your program is very informative and useful. Can I get the contacts of, uh, he wants to get the contacts of the panelists. Mm. I want to get advice 
regarding my middle level enterprise. Perfect. Uh, now, uh, again, related to that, I have uh, uh, someone here saying thanks for the business. Uh, is Okecho Lawrence is watching from Ginger and uh, is appreciating the show, mm -hmm. how it is. But there's a very interesting question here, which is coming in, uh, which I wanted us to look at. Uh, someone is saying, while we are talking about corporate governance, can we also discuss professionalism of most of the people out there? Because boy, oh boy, most of the professionals are not reliable, and their work ethics borders to zero. <laughs> yes. uh, that is a comment. I don't know whether yeah. you agree or disagree with that. <laughs> yes. uh, we, I, I, I agree. I wouldn't... Uh, everyone you meet in the workplace mm. is a new experience. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you'll get those who are very, very dedicated, very proficient, but mm. you will again get those who have information, like we said, but who may not be knowledgeable mm. about what they are doing. Or mm. they have both, but they choose mm. to be an ESCO. Mm. Mm. The question is, what systems do you have in place to put people to task to perform? Mm. For example, those you are choosing of being lazy, yeah. do they have targets? Because, you see, uh, if, if we say in a month you need to deliver one output and two months pass and you've not delivered any, then we don't need to wait for a year to end. Mm. Eh? As a supervisor, I'll quickly call you and say, now, uh, what do we do? Because I'm paying you every month, there's no salary you've missed, you cannot be delivering nothing. Mm -hmm. So we have two sides to the coin. But also they are go gets to a point, again aided by your policies and procedures, where you say you have consistently failed to deliver. Mm -hmm. We need to relinquish you of your duties mm -hmm. and are allowing somebody else uh, to be able to push uh, your work forward and mm. also the business forward. Mm. But again, that comes back to your practices. Mm. How do you measure performance of staff? How do you equip them to do their work? Mm. Mm. Um, uh, if those are in place, mm. then you always have people who are, who are, who are, who are not in it mm -hmm. to, to really mm. perform, to mm. offer value, but mm. you are easily, you will easily appreciate that pick mm. them out, mm. then either put them on performance improvement plans mm. or, you know, uh, uh, give them an opportunity to go and work somewhere else where they can work. Yeah. Thank you, Noah. Um, I'm sorry, we have quite a number of questions mm. Uh, mm. here that are coming in. But it's a very important point because mm. uh, I think the number of professionals who want to be motivated to do what they're supposed to do. Mm. And now that motivation can be here and there, especially yeah. if it comes from third parties. Yeah. Uh, and it's happening a lot, uh, both in the corporate and the public spaces. Yeah. But we'll get to that, I think, sometime as okay. well. I have um, someone here saying, it's me, Sharif, in Dubai. How can I shift from one-on-one -on -one to a corporate customer base? I think him, the way he looks at it, is doing a business where he's selling to particular individuals. Now he wants to go to a customer base that is yes. corporate. Yes. Uh, we may try to define that, yes. but that's what he's saying. Mm. Then he's asking, how can I know that my business is scalable or non-scalable? In other words, how can I scale my business okay. mm. as well? Mm. Uh, mm. I think, uh, I don't know whether Charles want to come in on that. I can quickly yes. comment on it. Yes. Any business uh, that you have has served somebody, yeah. did that somebody come back? Mm -hmm. If he came back, did he keep giving you feedback that these are the things that make him love what you are doing? Mm. And to what extent you are different from another provider of a similar solution? Yes. Once it, dis it, it makes it clear that you are different because of this, yeah. Work more on those, those areas where you are different. Okay. Two, if you've been getting customers, there should be repeat business. And repeat business should also come with referrals. Yeah. If you are beginning to have a lot more referrals pouring in, it tells you that there's great potential for your enterprise. Yeah. Ride on that and make that work. Mm. Three, look at similar enterprises in your space. Mm. To what extent are people doing what you are doing, growing, or they are beginning to say, I think the thing has maxed out, it has reached certain peak, mm. and you need to do something else to give it a bit more energy. Mm. So once you look at those aspects of your own customer base coming back and giving you referrals, mm. looking at the competitors and seeing whether they are growing or they are not growing, mm. and seeing new people entering your space, all those are great indicators on whether you still have opportunity which you are not tapping into, yeah. or you actually are reaching a point where you need to be giving a tweak to what you are doing to improve your operations. I hear you. Okay. Very yeah. good. Th there was, uh, 
mm. something small on, on, on moving from business to customer mm. and yes. also business to business mm. for, yeah. for the uh, uh, gentleman in Dubai. Yeah. Um, your business to customer interactions actually show you what people like, mm. like uh, Mr. Ochich has expressed. But your next question should be, can I sell to these same people at an institutional level? Mm. Mm. For example, if I'm selling sanitizer or masks to individuals going to work, mm. can I get their organizations where they work to start purchasing masks mm. for them? Mm. Mm. So uh, for me, I think that question at that point, what you ask is, uh, to you need to ask this customer where uh, every day you pass here, do mm. you or run an operator shop, do you mm. work in, a, mm. in an NGO? Yeah. What, where is it located? Mm. Yeah. Can I be delivering these masks to your office? Mm. Correct. Instead of me waiting for you on the road junction, mm. or where you, you, you branch off to your workplace. That mm. quickly enables you mm. to get where they work. Then you can start to talk to the people in the organization who are making uh, decisions, decisions regarding purchase Correct. of what you're selling. Perfect. So Perfect. you can, you need to move beyond meeting this person to the corporate spaces where this yeah. person operates mm -hmm. so that you can now start to deal with the entire... Uh, and I think that addresses also a little on the aspect of scalability yeah. of yes. the business. Exactly. Great. Um, Charles, I have Julius here specifically looking out for you. Mm. He's saying, thank you for the show. Assuming one is working in Kampala with another corporate company, I would like an advice on how one can start and manage your own business that is operating 500 kilometers away from your workstation and make it successful given it's difficult to resign and go manage such a business that's just starting. That is Julius. I think he's contemplating, he's grappling with the idea of uh, balancing uh, an Julius eight to five. Julius is touching on I something that is always a question at the back of the mind of everybody who's earning money. Mm. Because as you earn money, we don't expect you at the end of 30 days to have eaten it all. Mm. You should have either invested it somewhere some investment where people take care of the management and everything else, you can start from there. Invest through the banking, uh, whatever, uh, so, uh, routes, mm. fixed deposit account, mm. stock exchange, treasury bills, mm. starting point. Those are, that's quite easy. Yeah. You release your money to somebody. Now even NSSF has opened a similar route. He's saying your organization is removing from you 5% and adding you 10%. Mm. If you want to go beyond that and you have extra money, bring it to us, we mm. grow it for you. Mm. At the end of the year, we give you 11, 9 percent. Yes. It's a starting point. Mm. Mm. Which is actually bigger than some of these instruments where mm. we put money. Correct. If you look at that return on investment. And then it's not taxed. That's yep. why it gets even much better. Much interesting. Mm. But no, I have a question for you here. Mm. Uh, sorry, I have it's quite a number okay. of questions. Uh, you'll bear with me. <laughs> please, okay. please, because please. Uh, sometimes people please. get very personal when please. their questions are not answered. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have someone who's saying thanks for the program. I'd like to ask what system, stock process, would I need to ensure my field staff get to clients and service them? My problem is that we get service requests and we dispatch texts to clients. However, we get reports of no-show from clients. <laughs> and at times, the tech will quote a hire but agrees with a client to do it for cheap. Now, we're talking about the professionalism yes. of mm. uh, our employees. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks. The, the issue here is you need to have a system mm. that has where you're able to verify mm. what has been done from the client's or customer's side. Mm. Yeah. For example, I've seen uh, institutions where if you're sent to deliver a mail or to do some work, you go with a voucher or, or a, 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 a delivery book where the person who has received or who has uh, you know, benefited from the service you had gone to offer, signs to acknowledge that you have actually offered that service. So first and foremost, whether it is an internet-enabled service, mm. the question becomes, do you, what system do you have to ensure that when I reach, you can confirm that I've reached? Mm. Some people now capture, for example, fingerprints. Mm. Some capture uh, 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 numbers. Mm. Some uh, have books where I'll sign and say, I have received Noah at my shop to come and fix my, my, my issue. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, put management in those places. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine that a bit with the gentleman who says he's so far away from Kampala, mm -hmm. but he wants to start a business. Mm -hmm. Some of us want to start a 10 million 
go to rearing business mm -hmm. Mm? or uh, growing of a crop mm. and it, in a year that crop earns us two million mm. but you are on a job where every month you earn 10 million mm. it wouldn't mm. be reasonable for you to resign that job to go and concentrate on a business which even has risks and this is what i usually advise my friends and uh, uh, peers who are keen on that put the management on site mm. let's not forget there are people who are graduates with mm. certificates with diplomas with uh, all sorts of so, uh, sources of qualification who can work for example for 300,000 mm. or 200,000 mm. on mm. your farm mm. tell them i'm doing 100 goats on my farm i'm rearing 100 goats on mm. my farm i have enough space i'm hiring you as uh, as a graduate of Bukhalasa who has uh, a diploma a certificate in animal husbandry Mm. Be on my farm. Your role is to ensure that my goats are well fed. Mm. They are counted every morning and evening. Mm. Those who, they are tagged so that mm. newborns are known. And every month I'll be coming to check. Mm. Mm. Others have even gone to a, a level of biometrics. You've seen now animals with belts in mm. the neck. Mm. Those belts actually are connected to GPS mm. and other forms of technology. Mm. You can mm. monitor it from your phone. Mm. Mm when it is even a thousand kilometers away mm. we need to start to move there yeah. you must be willing to mm. invest a bit mm. this mm. knowledge is available again and these solutions are available in the market get to the people who know this kind of things and they'll help you can you. even monitor the temperature of the animal exactly yeah. Charles, i have a very interesting comments here you can weigh mm. in on that because it's an area which we've tackled in the past mm. Mm. someone is saying ugandans love a one-man show it is everywhere in wash places and other places and certainly in business yeah. <laughs> Another problem is Ugandan businesses are very informal and as such we think corporate governance is for the big corporate entities. I bet corporate governance comes with planning and Uganda and planning are hardly in the same sentence. What do you make of that Charles? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 It is something we started with. We said that um, the one man show first of all people begin businesses as individuals. Mm -hmm. That's very natural almost everywhere. That's how things happen. You start in a simple, informal way, but yeah. you can, over time, begin to sophisticate and yes. formalize things. Yes. The main thing here is, to what extent is your enterprise growing, and the growing is not causing you lack of sleep? Yes. The moment you begin <laughs> to find that now, even counting the kids that were born last week, you don't remember. <laughs> It's time to begin to know now these things over stretching you. <laughs> Bring in systems. Mm. Simply say there will be a report on a weekly basis of kids that were born. Mm. There will be a weekly report on sick goats. Mm. There will be weekly reports on stolen goats or goats which were mm. whatever happened. Mm. So the moment you bring in these systems, you bring in the aspect that we talked about dearly earlier on, which is delegation mm. of you, what you would have done. Yes. Delegation does not mean abdicating responsibility. Yes. You take responsibility, but this time in a very structured way. Mm. Your role now is to make sure that when reports come on a weekly basis, yeah. read them. Yes. If you read a report, and a report has an area that needed actioning, mm. they are waiting for the action. Mm. The fellow who produced the report is saying, by the way, we reported that you, the goat was stolen. The boss is likely to talk to LOC1. Mm. He's likely to cause a, a policeman to come and do a whatever investigation. If you don't do those <laughs> things, <laughs> these so-called systems are broken. Yeah, exactly. They now know boss is very busy in Kampala. <laughs> yes. You can't write anything. You will not even bother. Yeah. Let's just recycle the report of last week. Yes. So the one-man show thing there is something that came as a result on how you started. Mm. But you must begin to adjust and quickly know that you are entering a space where growth requires that systems come in place. Mm -hmm. But as they come in place, recognize the benefits. And by looking at the benefits as a pastor of this church, which is growing, mm -hmm. and you begin to see that I cannot be having 14 services in a day mm. on a Sunday. Mm. Just allow another pastor, the other side, another <laughs> pastor, the other side, another the other. <laughs> but then oh, give them branches, yeah. a structured way of running those yeah. branches. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. You'll have created an entity that will give you a much better legacy. That's yes. a good one. Um, we have a very powerful experience here. Um, mm. Someone is actually sharing his experience. Mm. 
mm. is Pison Mujizi from Bushen. Mm. He's saying corporate governance and succession planning is fundamental for any business to grow. I founded a circle called Buturo here in Bushen in 2007 with just one million. Mm -hmm. And now the financial institution is worth 10 billion. Look at that. The institution has grown due to proper systems. I was Look the founding chairman, retired, and three other chairpersons have led the institution. Very similar to, what was it called, the, the circle that we brought here? Uh, uh, Ruchiga circle. Yes. Where they had a very clear principle that, please, you come on our board for only three years, renewable ones, mm. then you take a break of, we sit four years, mm. to yes. allow others to come in there. If mm. you've been sitting on issues, the next team will unearth them. Mm. If you've been holding the vision back, the next team will blow it up. Mm. Mm. So, it's very good testimony there. Yes, yes. Mm. I think that's a good one, honestly, uh, when you look at it. And especially at this point when we are now talking of, even at the level of government, we are saying, please, we are spreading circles across the country through a mioga. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But people are not going, are not benefiting. Yeah, it was in the papers last week, mm. where the leadership of Ginger is simply saying, many of the people that have taken this money, we can't trust them. Yes. We cannot trust them. Mm. 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 So testimony like that is very handy it, because it's, it's a Ugandan experience. Yes, yes. Mm. Now I have um, again another comment. Uh, here is saying I'm in love with the program. I love the idea of well-structured delegation, respect for professional employees, etc. And I think the aspect of respect for professional employees is key. Yes. I've seen many people, mm. Uh, mm. you know, mm. uh, hiring very good brains. Yes. And those brains fail to deliver in that organization, mm. but deliver in another. And I can tell you, Charles, yes. if you checked many of these huge once prosperous entrepreneurs who went into banks mm. and made borrowings mm. of large amounts, mm. which amounts they have now failed to pay and they are leading to the liquidation of the enterprises. Mm. If you talk to their professional team, mm. they will tell you we are not allowed to discuss that, that, that application. Mm. They both handle it alone with the banks. Mm. We simply told that deliver this, deliver this, deliver this. The, your input was not needed. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go outside the boss. Go and look at the team the boss has. Not even any other person. Just the team he has. Mm. And ask, what contribution did you give to the boss before this uh, loan application was approved? They'll tell you, no, the boss never consulted us. Mm. That's or we only directed to do this and this and this. We're not required to mm. give advice. I hear you. That's a request. That's, that, that was an input from uh, Joseph, or mm. Tech. Now, Joseph also has a request for you, Charles, specifically. Mm. He's mm. saying, my request to Mr. Chichi, I'm a secretary to Seta Junior Staff Circle, which has grown as a result of COVID-19 to over 50 million mm -hmm. in only three months. Look at that. We are having an AGM on November 2021 in a date to be confirmed later. Allow me to invite you <laughs> to offer a lecture <laughs> on the date. Well ahead, November 2021 is the AGM date. Oh, I can give him my telephone number, 0772-699-808. Let's have a chat, mm -hmm. and then we can confirm it. No, I have Charles. Charles is watching us from Stockholm in Sweden. He's saying, how do we address health at the workplace, especially post-COVID-19, where well-being has been highlighted? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Charles. The, the issue is with, with health is don't take risks, don't assume anything mm. where you are not an expert at. Mm. We have already guidelines uh, for you know, managing how we interact at mm. our workplaces. Mm. Mm. Uh, now, the issue is, again, back to corporate governance, how is the institution welcoming and uh, mm. pra putting in place the recommended practices? Mm. Mm. At an institutional level, there is responsibility. Mm -hmm. But also at a personal level, you have responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you're not being issued masks by the company, protect your life. Mm -hmm. You may re reduce your savings by buying a mask mm -hmm. and making sure you always have a mask okay. with you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have shifts uh, at your workplace, opt for shifts which are less crowded. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, I used to work in a place which had shifts and for example, the night shift was not liked by so many people. Mm. Mm. So, uh, but for those who, for, for purposes of your health, if you know yourself or there are less people around, mm. you may opt for a shift which is less crowded. Mm. So again, 
I can't give you one specific answer and say this will work for you. G look at your environment, mm. your work environment, very critically. See what is not possible. Mm. Or see the predisposing uh, uh, factors to contracting COVID. Mm. And then try to put in place very cost-effective measures mm -hmm. to ensure that your safety, because your safety is paramount. You need mm -hmm. the money, yes. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to, to earn the money when you're not alive? Mm -hmm. So uh, if mm -hmm. you have a management that listens, make recommendations. Mm -hmm. You can say, from World Health Organization says uh, social distancing, uh, in terms of social distancing, we should be this meters apart. Mm -hmm. I see we are one meter closer. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, can we maybe have you know, people mm. coming in. Like, for example, at our workplace, mm. we've had to work in shifts. Mm -hmm. Where they say, yes, so we can't have everyone in office, let's do shifts. Mm. So you, we have a half of the team working mm. this week or for two weeks, and then the other team is working, but remotely. Mm -hmm. Then the other team which has been working remotely is allowed mm. to come in mm -hmm. the other two weeks mm -hmm. so that you ensure that the numbers allow for social distancing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you cannot take covid for granted, especially mm. now that we are even getting new variants, mm. which may not be very, very uh, mm. uh, responsive to the existing vaccines. Yeah. Thank you very much, Noah. Charles, mm. how would you sum up our show today? I think what I want to say is that um, corporate governance is not that big, distant animal where you feel it is for certain individuals. Mm. It is something for all of us, yeah. and we can start somewhere. Mm. Do not wait for a perfect template mm. and the key thing is whatever you have started enforce it mm -hmm. yes. monitor it and whatever you learn from the monitoring refine the thing mm. and keep at it over time you'll create something very sophisticated mm. the late Mukwano Alikani started from Gomba mm. in a village that was totally insignificant where I'm sure this so-called governance and what have you are not such a big story mm. Today, the Mukwano group is such a sophisticated international group. Mm. It has continued to refine and improve. Mm. And hand over these learnings that you make to the next team and trust them and guide them and nurture them. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Thank you, Noah. It's been a good show, I'm sure, viewers, and you've picked quite a number of very important pointers for business sustainability, succession planning, and adherence to corporate governance principles. I've been your host, Charles Boji. I know there are quite a number of questions which we weren't able to answer, but I promise you one thing. Mm. We'll find time and get to all those questions because we have them. Mm. And I think Charles will dedicate a session yes, to we go need. through all these questions. Yes. Again, thank you for being a good audience. I've been your host, Charles Woji. Have a good afternoon and God bless.